welcome back to the channel guys today i received my intel i9 3900k this is a cpu i've been looking forward to ever since i moved over to the z690 platform and um i just want to show you some performance figures and i'll show you my settings in my bios and uh, i'll give you a quick taste of what this cpu can do now i have to say it is very very power hungry you are going to need some very very good cooling to get the best out of this and luckily for me i've invested quite heavily in that area so i was able to achieve 5.8 gigahertz on all cores all p cores via thermal velocity boost and i was able to get my e cores the efficiency cores to 4.6 gigahertz i was also able to get my cache or uh, ring bus to 5.1 gigahertz. This actually overclocks so much better than um, my Intel i9 12900K. I was only able to get my um, cache frequency up to 4.3 gigahertz with that, and I was only able to get my E cores to 4.1 on that, and um, and my all core was only 5.3 as a maximum, so I can get to 5.8 on this, 5.1 for the cache, and 4.6 of the e course. It's a massive, massive upgrade. And running 6400 MHz of DDR5 running at CL3238, 3860. And this is a G, I think it's Trident G Skill 5. And really, really good, decent RAM. And I'll run an IDA test so you guys can see the latency figures and bandwidth figures at the moment. But before I start, I thought it was important for me to show you my setup because it really does matter. So I'm running the RTX 4090 Supreme X and I'm running um, a custom water loop. So this is, I think the EK, um, I can't remember exactly what the block's called, but um, it's around a mid-range block. And more importantly, I'm running an external radiator. This is the Mora 420 LT. I'm also running two EKD5 pumps as well. And uh, I'll just quickly show you the water temperature here, doing around 18.4 degrees. So I've got a very, very extreme and exotic cooling solution. And this is really, really going to help get the best out of my 3900K. So it was just worth showing you guys what I'm running so you can understand why my temperatures are what they are. So yeah, I don't want to waste too much time. Let's get straight into it. So as we all know, um, I'm running an RTX 1490 with this setup. So hopefully I should be able to get the most out of this CPU now, this GPU, sorry. So I'm just going to close this down. I'll keep um, core temp on so you guys can see temps at all times and this will should remain on top because it's got always on top there so um cpu z does have its own kind of benchmark shows you single core and multiple performance i'll run that now and as you can see breaking into the eighteen thousand mark here and then for single core i'm up to about nine four six nine four seven This is not a very, very heavy test. So as you can see, um, I didn't even break into 80 degrees for any of my cores. And so just to kind of put this into perspective, I'm just gonna submit my score now. And uh, you guys can kind of see how this performs. So in terms of max temperature, I got to about 74 degrees. Um, I'm running 1.325 volts, by the way, that's how, um, that's how much voltage I'm using. So not nothing too crazy. Um, so if we go here, we can see where I pretty much rank. So this is me in terms of single threaded. It basically destroys everything that's available in this chart. I know the um, AMD Zen 4 does quite well. I think the 7950X is higher than all of these. So this isn't exactly giving you the complete breakdown of what's available in the market, but it's close because it does show you how much faster it is than a 12900K. Now, in terms of multi-threading, um, it only has the 5950X here, unfortunately, but as you can see, the 3900K way out there. So we've done with CPU Z now. I'm just going to put my core temp back up. I'm also running HW info in the background, so I'll show you that I'm not throttling or anything like that. So let's run something a bit more strenuous. So I'll start off with Cinebench R20. Now, Cinebench R20 is just a good test just to kind of show your multi-core and single core performance i'm not going to do single core here i'll post them on the video so you guys can see them individually because it takes far too long to to get those results but i will provide them to you just not in the video so um when it comes to power draw 
can see I'm drawing 336 watts. So you need an insane amount of cooling to be able to deal with this. So I was able to score one, uh, 16,377. That is like almost 200 points off beating an Intel Xeon Platinum 8168 CP. That is just insane. So it, it really does have a lot of um, multi-core performance. Uh, so I'm going to go to Cinebench R23 now because I know you guys are interested in that one as well. This one's become a bit more popular now. So I'm just going to run the multi-core test again. I'll provide the single core uh, results in the description box or in the in a pinned comment or something. And I'll link a picture so you guys can see as it just takes far too long to run in this kind of video. I don't want to be waiting around uh, just to give you a single core score. Again, as you can see, the power draw is very, very high, over 300 watt. But I got a score of 43,109, which is just insanely high. Beats out a Threadripper. Uh, 2990 um, by quite some margin. That's all Cinebench wrapped up. See, max temp was around 84 degrees. And uh, let's move on to something that's quite common when it comes to leaks and things, and that is Geekbench 5. This gives you a single core score and a multi score, um, multi core score. This runs like a series of uh, like Photoshop suite stuff, video editing suite stuff, just general tasks that uh, people do. And then it gives you a score at the end if you're not familiar with this. So I'll run that now. All of these programs are free. Um, so you can try that out yourself as well. Now this one isn't particularly demanding, but if you do have, let's say, uh, a memory overclock that's not quite stable, um, this could blue screen your computer. So um, these can actually identify some instability. Okay, so as you can see for single score, 2,351, which is really, really high. A multi score, two, uh, 28,091. Um, I'll take a quick link of this here so you guys can check that out in a pinned comment that I'll make a bit later. Again, I like to provide full transparency because there is no smoke and mirrors around here. Ooh. Okay, so that's Geekbench done. Cinebench has been done, and temps have been very, very nice. Let's quickly show you um, some IDA, not so much the CPU side of things, just the memory, so you guys can see what kind of bandwidth I'm getting. So, uh, this is the latest version of IDA 64. So, I'm going to run the cache and the memory benchmark. So I'm going to start that now. I've got the full version, so I'll get a full breakdown. If you've got a trial version, you'll only get uh, these these scores. You won't get the full full uh, readout. So as you can see, my um, I was able to get my cache to 5.1. You can see right there. And you can see the CPU multiplies at 5.8. So all cores are at 5.8. And of course, my... Um, E cores are running at 4.6 gigahertz. Doesn't show that here, but that is what they're running at. So as you can see, the memory, 104.15 gigabyte. That is the highest I've seen it. That's faster than I've ever seen it on my um, 12900K. So the 3900K is meant to have a bit of a more mature memory controller, shall we say? Okay, come to the end of the test now. 15.2 nanoseconds on L3 cache. 56.9 nanoseconds on uh, the memory that is awesome so very very tight timings there and great performance I'm almost running out of benchmarks now to show you so we've got one called corona benchmark now this one just basically renders an image and the quicker you do it uh, the better performance your system has obviously so the lower the, the time frame it takes to complete this the better so as you can see, temps are here drawing 300 watt, but I'm doing that rather comfortably. None of my cores are doing uh, 80 degrees. 
my water temperature is still around 18 degrees and the ambient temperature in my room is around 21 to 22 degrees but I keep my obviously my external rad near my window just to get that extra bit of cooling from the cool air outside so I was able to get a render time of 32 seconds which is really really nice so I'm happy with that anyway let's move on to something um, a little bit more familiar for most people okay so I'm also going to be running um, the regular time spy everyone should be able to run this and uh, you'll see the kind of CPU score I'll get as well as what my RTX 4090 is doing as well so let's just get straight into this I was lucky enough to be able to get an RTX 4090. I actually had to travel to the retailer and queue to get it because I knew um, the situation online was going to be similar to the Freddy, Freddy series launch and it definitely was and most most uh, cars sold out within minutes. Um, because now you have to compete against scalpers who generally use bots and um, it's really, really hard to compete with that. So I went to the retailer. I was able to... Uh, get my card in hand on day one and uh, it definitely was worth the travel so I was able to get myself a Supreme X RTX 4090 and it cools very very well that's one of the most surprising things about the card it's it's um, cooling barely ever hits 60 degrees and I run like a custom fan curve which really helps with the cooling I'm comfortable with it the card getting up to 80% fans because I don't have my PC on my desk so it's a bit further away than most people, but um, it cools absolutely amazing. So I originally planned on water cooling my card, but because it cools so well, and because of the limitation of the overclocking potential of these cards, there is really no point in water cooling this card because just about three thousand, I'd say three gigahertz or three point one gigahertz is pretty much the best you can expect unless you want to do some voltage module shunt mods and then I don't know LN2 or some dry ice or something you're not really going to get much above that so it wouldn't really be worth buying a water block for my car specifically anyway 1490 Ti might be a different story whether or not I'll get one of those um, jury's out on that we'll have to see um, but I'm very very happy with the RTX 1490 and to be honest this thing is really really giving pretty much every cpu on the market right now a run for its money so hopefully the uh 3900k can uh spring out a few more percent um out of the card that i may have been losing so we're about to get into the cpu portion of the test and this is where uh the 3900K needs to work its magic. I wish I could remember what my uh, 1200K used to get, but I'll have to kind of go back and look and what I was getting. But uh, that should be the score now. Let's see what I got. Okay, so I was able to get a graphic score of 39,000. 763 so almost almost hit that 40,000 graphic score mark cpu score was 23,951 which is not bad at all it's going to compare the results online just so i can grab the urls you can see this is my account and we can get a bit more detail on the run so my average clock for my gpu was uh, 3 gigahertz 0 0.011 um average temp was 47 degrees celsius but as you can see the average clock of my 3900K was 5.8 gigahertz and of course 6400 megahertz of uh, DDR5. So I'm going to grab this link here because I'm going to post that in my uh, comment section so you guys can take another look just to again show that there is no funny business going on and every single thing I'm showing you here today is genuine so that was a time spy score wasn't it so i'm just going to put it under this one and uh, i'll just add that to my pinned comment so that is pretty much it in terms of uh showing you what the cpu can do but i'm just going to quickly show um the hw info readout just to show you guys there was no like throttling or anything like that 
thermal throttling and it says at no point there was any thermal throttling no critical temperature no core thermal throttling all of that says no maximum temperature on the cp package was 83 degrees um and core max was 85 so it still had 15 degrees away from tj max so still a bit of headroom there and um maximum core clock was 5.8 gigahertz so it pretty much remained at that so that is pretty much it i mean it's uh a very very powerful cpu but just takes a lot of power that is the main drawback but if you're fine with that then it's uh it's gonna do the business for sure so as promised i'll quickly show you my bios settings nothing special here i'm using the msi z690 unify uh, motherboard uh, the bias version i'm using is 1.91 this one was released on the 17th of october i believe and um it works really well so i just want to quickly show you my settings so i'm using the turbo um velocity boost basically so i'm using an offset of three which will allow all your p cores to be at 5.8 gigahertz in specific specific light workloads you potentially could get a 6.1 gigahertz on one or two cores but i haven't i've yet to seen that to see that happen so it's not really a big deal e cores i got at 4.6 gigahertz as you can see um avx i've kind of just left that auto i've enabled it but i've left it at auto that can do what it wants under he heavy loads i'm not that concerned about that ring ratio which is the cache i've got that at 5.1 gigahertz now my power limit stuff is set to water cooler so basically this means everything's unlocked i think uh, the 3900k does that out of the box anyway um, as you can see, I'm running 6400 MHz of DDR5. Uh, the voltage I'm running in override mode at 1.325 volts, and my uh, load line calibration is at level 3. Now, this is something that you need to be mindful of. If you're using something like an ASUS board or a Gigabyte board, um, numbers are different. They may be inverted, so a higher number might be the equivalent to level 3 for an MSI. Um, just be mindful of that. You can't just kind of copy and paste if you're using a different brand. For my uh, voltage for my RAM, I'm using 1.415, just because I've tweaked it a little bit and that just gives a bit of added stability. For those who are wondering, um, you can have a look at the timings here. 32, 38, 38, 60. For the uh, TIEFI, I've gone with 67,000. Uh, and for the T4, I've gone 25. I haven't really done too much tweaking because I'm kind of happy with the performance as it is. Um, is there anything more to show you guys? I think that is pretty much it. There isn't really much to show. It's quite a quick and clean overclock. Um, so hopefully this was helpful to you guys. And uh, once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.